All right, so we split them all open, cut them open, pulled the guts out. I did some measurements, did some checking, kind of went over some quick stuff with you guys. But let's go to the board. All right, this is going to, what I wanted to do is kind of break down each one by price and what I thought of it. Pro Honda filter, $13.95 average price. The quality of the internals is what was most attractive. The biggest difference between the Honda filter and everything else was that first initial cracking it open and seeing what was inside. And that had to do with the top and bottom of the filter. It consisted of a foam style seal as well as, an, as the moment the oil is entering in, coming into the filter, it's immediately getting filtered, and that's what I liked about it the most. The inner cone structure that kind of holds everything in place, it just looks a lot more quality than anything else that I opened. The filter paper, I actually ripped it, but the paper itself measured out to be 51 inches long, okay, which is, I mean, shorter and longer than some of the other ones. But the filter construction of the actual paper that's filtering is what I liked. It was a two-ply construction, and it actually looks like quality filtration paper to me. A filtered paper that I'd want to see in my filter. Let's just say that. I know you can't touch it and feel it and taste it, but it just looks like a much more quality paper than I saw in any of the other ones. Design in the bottom, which is both the spring retention to keep everything nice and sealed, as well as the pressure relief, seemed very smart to me, the way that they constructed it. All built in one system, no crappy random spring. Good tension on the pressure relief valve, very smooth function. I can function it up and down without it sticking or anything. So to me, thus far, the Honda filter seemed way above everybody else. Okay, The Emgo, which was another one that we did, this is a very cheap filter. It's probably the bottom line filter that you can get along with Parts Unlimited. 720, the top filter cover design. This one just had a regular metal top. Okay, so oil's coming in hard and then going around the filter then, and, and then being filtered. The center design looks very cheap to me. Looks like, uh, I, I mean, I'm not saying that it needs to be some phenomenal design, but it, it, it just appeared to be cheap to me. And it was much larger as compared to the Honda one. The glue on one side came right off, no problem, when it comes to that top cover. Um, the length of the filtered paper came out to 49 inches, so it's shorter than the Honda one, but it just looks like regular paper. The top layer of a piece of cardboard. It's not, it doesn't seem to be layered at all, it just looks like paper. Nothing to it. Moving on to the Parts Unlimited, top cover filter design, so it had the same type of top metal portion on both sides of their filter. Is that a problem? I don't know. All right, so let's break down these last four. First one starting with the Vesra oil filter. Vesra, again, had a very large center structure like the other ones, which I don't really like because it allows for a very thin filter, but it did have what I think is the third highest um, length of filter. The filtered paper still pretty much feels the same as all the other ones. Very mediocre. Uh, I can't really tell the difference between those and the last three that we did, besides the Honda one. The pressure relief seems pretty normal for stiffness. I don't have anything to bark at about that. They use a big old spring at the bottom, which, I mean, it, it works because many other, of the other filters do the, same, the exact same thing. But nothing really stands out to me about this filter, honestly. It just seems very mediocre. So at 10 bucks a pop, honestly, I don't think you could really go wrong with it. But I put it on mine, no. High flow filtro, okay? High flow filtro. Now, this one was a little bit different in many, and actually a, a couple different ways. So the idea of, of a high flow oil filter is what I've been struggling to get wrap my head around, you know? Because if you want an a lot of flow out of your filter, something I feel like has to be sacrificed. Either filtration, um, something. Something has to be sacrificed, you know? So they achieve it. And they do achieve it, and I'm gonna show you, and you guys might have saw earlier as to how, but the two main things that I saw from them was they do have a long filter paper. It's almost, it's all, it's the second longest out of all of them, okay? 
The paper seems like a different kind of construction. It's very, it, it's a much thicker construction. Probably looks a little bit better than the parts I learned in the, in the MGO, but very long. But what I didn't really like was the way that they um, half their filter in a way to, I guess, get it to be high flow. So if you remember, they had that little design in their filter. I mean, the filtration is there, okay? Where I saw most of the high flow filtro was out of the pressure relief. Pressure relief had a nice hole in the center as compared to any other one, Honda, k &N, all of them, none of them had that. Which means that when the filter gets clogged, they are allowing a higher flow, I would think, of oil, contaminated oil, to get into the motor. Is that good or bad? I don't know. I don't get paid enough to analyze that, but to me it doesn't seem like a smart idea. Yes, you do, whether it's dirty oil or regular oil, once the filter gets clogged so much that the pressure relief is now being activated, A, you've already done something wrong. How long it takes for that to happen, I don't know. But it's kind of a misconception to me is to where your high flow is actually where it's actually taking place. And it's it seems to be mainly in the pressure relief valve. Okay, more oil coming out when the filter is clogged. It's not just coming out the sides of the pressure relief. The oil comes up through here and out the sides. It's coming out of all three orifices, the top one and the two sides. It's good or bad, I don't know. But 10 bucks, it's not really worth my money. Um, it just seems like a lot of verbiage to get you to buy it. Whenever someone puts performance or high grade or premium filtration or heavy duty or high performance, it's they're all just selling terms to get you kind of amped up. Do have some information on it about it, which is cool. A lot of the other ones don't have any information, but yeah. Fram. This one is an absolute joke. Paper length, 43 inches. Okay, it's pretty common. It's very thin very very thin material I would almost say it's worse than the two cheaper ones the MGO and the parts unlimited just very very thin paper okay I don't see it worth my time whatsoever the construction is very very thin metal in the walls and this one was the easiest to cut through the walls seem very very thin yes cool they have this patented grip technology awesome but it's to me it's not worth anything um, the pressure relief, this is it right here. It functions as both a spring, they have a plastic little thing inside of there, and when it opens up, that's about all you get right there. Okay, very, very cheap, cheap design, and they sell it between $10 to $12. It's actually higher than the Vestro, which I, if in, in, in a worst case scenario, I would use. And I, or I would use the, the Shoot, I would, I'd rather stick an MGO on there than put this on there, to be completely honest with you. It just seems very, very cheap. For a company as big as Fram is, uh, it really is underwhelming. Very underwhelming for the price that they put it at and everything. That's probably my least favorite out of all of them, just because of just how big the brand is and how low the quality is. Now, the one that I feel like everyone's been waiting to hear about, which is the K&N, which I was very surprised about, actually. Canon and the, the the sure construction of this thing was was unmatched by any of them. The Honda one w was pretty tough to get through. I will add that it was a, it was very very similar to the Canon. The Canon was very tough to get into, very tough to cut. The the metal that that that, that they use for the sides is very very stiff. So the construction is there, which is good. It keeps the pressure nice and strong inside the filter. It's not flexing or any, doing a, anything like that. The filter was very, very thick to me. It was very hard to cut through with the razor blade I was using, and the construction of the paper seems a little bit different. Pretty similar to Vesra. Mm, they dye their paper. This one seems a little bit thicker, you can see. This one you can kind of see some light through. This one I can't see any through. The length was the longest of all of them, at five feet, the longest out of all of the filters. Now, does length matter? I'm not that type of fella. So I can't tell you if that matters or not. But when you think common sense about it, more filter, longer amount, seems like there'd be more filter in there. So, and it, and it was woven nicely. They had some gapping in it where they kind of spread open. It wasn't very, a very even 
filter that kind of sat and nice and pretty inside. Not that you would ever really look inside of your filter unless you were like anal about what's going on. But very, very tough construction for filter. They say this is a high performance uh, anti flowback valve or anti drain back valve. High performance, just verbiage, you know, it's nothing really to throw all your money at. Pressure relief is probably one of the stiffer ones out of all of them. But if their filtration is as good as it kind of looks, I would think, I mean, it had the most filtration, then they're allowing for a lot of pressure to be built up here before it hits the bypass valve. Is that good or bad? I don't know. But the filtration I felt was top out of all of the six that I found. So enough talking about it. Let me give you guys, they also have that cool little wrench option, which I've seen tear off. Um, so that's up to you. You can also put safety wire on them, which is kind of cool, which is different than the other ones. It's just, it's one of those things where it's like reinventing the wheel. Oh, cool. Let's put grip on it, but let's lower the quality of everything. And this one's kind of like, let's put that on it because no one else really has that. So it's, it's smart. Just like all these other ones, they also still have that metal top construction where it's not like the Honda where it's the filter. As soon as the oil hits it, it's metal. It goes around the metal and then into the filter kind of isolates it. So. To say all of that, I'll tell you what, there's nothing quite like shooting an entire five minute video and none of it gets recorded. So, let's try this again. Now that everything is a complete mess, I was super stoked to throw all this stuff away, but let's keep rolling. So my top picks from seven filters, here's what I think is the best. Number one, Pro Honda filter. Out of all the filters, they had, to me, the, the most quality, engineer design. They had the dual filter sides on the filter, so it's, so it's not just two pieces of metal slammed in between with a filter. So the design and the craftsmanship of how they do their metal and everything is worth the money. Okay, plus the way that they engineered a both spring and a pressure relief valve in one system to just not do with spring and all this crazy stuff. And if you really think about it, the brand name filters are held to a much higher standard than many other filters, okay? They are putting them on every single one of their bikes being made. They are held to a higher standard so that you are happy with how it filters or you are happy with the outcome of how the engine lasts or the length of, wh of which it lasts. Number two is going to be the KNN filter. It seems a lot thicker and just different compared to the other ones. The construction was awesome. Super stiff metal. Everything was real tight. It took me forever to get this paper out of there. The glue was like cement. Number three, I'm gonna go ahead and say the Vestra. It's an old company and they don't need to do all this crazy branding. They don't need to sell their product on the outside of it because you've never heard of it. Vestra's been around for a long time and they don't cut any corners. This seems very like a basic design that I would trust. So Vestra number three. Number four, it's getting super windy outside. No, number four, we're gonna go with the high flow. Does high flow make sense to me? No, it doesn't. Why I would want high flow in my filter? I don't know. If I can keep pressure with the oil pump, does it, does it get restricted when it hits the oil pump and now it's trying to overwork itself? It's beyond me. But the fact that they tried something new, I will give them points for that. With the pressure relief, having multiple ways to get out and oil the motor, that makes sense to me. The price point's not bad. Vespera is still around nine, nine dollars. KNN is really up there with around fifteen to sixteen dollars, even eighteen I've seen. Honda's is pretty standard, nine, about fourteen bucks. Number five is gonna have to be. This is a tough one because the last three really suck. So I'm gonna go with Parts Unlimited. They're a well-known company. Um, the construction was junk you know but they had filter there and it's I guess if I had to hopefully I never do number six is gonna be the frame I guess if your hands are oily you can untwist your oil filter I'm gonna go with the MGO the reason why this one is last because I have heard stories of those oil filters splitting open okay so, and, I, and that's just for me research talking to people. MGO, I've never seen it, but even my boss said, I've seen him explode. I don't want to put that on my bike. So, 
top down Pro Honda k and Versa high flow parts Fram and go. There you guys go. Tell me what you think. What do you use? I'm not trying to bash your filter, but I really think from investigation, these are the top three. Four, high flow. Now, how, how bad is this being number four? Eh, it's better than being the last three. I'll tell you that. The, the top four construction was all pretty good. It was just how they did it is what I, what I didn't like. Pro Honda seemed to be a step above everybody else with their design and their construction, and it just made the most sense to me. That's my two cents. You don't have to take it as the gospel, but that's what I think. So tell me guys what you think in the comments below. Am I way off? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys gained something from this. And if you don't know, there is a private section to the Motorcycle MD community. Motorcycle MD Inner Circle is now fully live and functional. So I've been spending tons of time with the Inner Circle members on our private Facebook group. I'll put a link in the description below for you to see that. I have car videos from singles, twins, VT750s, inline four, 750 Nighthawks, and more to come. Also, tons of cool content going on on that membership page, as well as hanging out with all the Inner Circle members on the private Facebook page where we discuss and talk about motorcycles until our face turns blue. Hope to see you guys around there. Until then, be sure to subscribe to my channel here. New videos coming out at least once or twice a month. Check me out on my Instagram page, forward slash the Motorcycle MD, as well as the Motorcycle MD Facebook page. But be sure to check out the private Inner Circle membership. You guys don't want to miss out. I'll see you guys around. As always, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys quality and garbage oil filters for your next build or your daily rider. I'll see you guys next time. God bless.